Jehovah's Witnesses don't have a lot of big events. They don't celebrate Christmas. They don't celebrate their birthdays. But they do have a big event in the summer. It's called the Convention. Each year, Jehovah's Witnesses hold conventions around the world in hundreds of languages. All sessions are open to the public and attendance is free. Come and see for yourself why millions attend each year. And the convention is a summer event once a year where all of the local witnesses descend on a football stadium for three days and listen to Bible talks, maybe a play on a Bible subject. It's kind of boring, but it is a big event for Jehovah's Witnesses. It's something they look forward to. They'll discuss it, all of the talks and things for the next couple of months. It's the highlight of the year in many ways. They'll come door to door telling you, please come with us. Uh, thousands of people are there. It's not a small event. They, they pay a lot of money. They invest in the campaign to invite people, in the staging, in renting of the facilities. During Corona time, instead of hiring thousands of stadiums around the world that they couldn't fill, they instead record the programme and publish it digitally. It's a little bit weird because they still kind of enforce, or at least you should be wearing a suit and tie, even though you're in your own home, on your own TV, basically watching a YouTube video. So it's a little bit strange, but anyway, we're in the height of the 2022 convention season. And I say season because they don't just publish the convention for you to watch over a couple of days. They publish tiny bits over a number of weeks, like a Disney Plus series that you don't really want to watch. That's basically what it is, mandatory Netflix viewing if Netflix was the most boring thing on the planet. I don't really watch too much of this because I'm free to do what I want now. Good to be out of there. But I will kind of skim uh, through the convention just to see if there's anything crazy, anything I should be aware of. I mean, my family and, and former friends are still witnesses and I don't want them to be, you know, drinking Kool-Aid. So I do keep <laughs> tabs on what's going on. And this year's convention, as I'm just skimming through, there are just a couple of things that I thought, I really, I just, even for myself, I just want to talk about what's going on here. So join me as we just take a little look at the convention this year and pick out some of my highlights or rather kind of lowlights of what's uh, going on so far. Okay, so let's have a look at the website. This is how you access the convention. You have to go on to their website. And the first thing you notice is it's not the banner. Like this is, I promise you, this is a big event for them. This is the only thing Jehovah's Witnesses are talking about. And yet on their website, it's the tiniest of banners up the top. Basically, they want to invite you to come but only if you've already got some interest in witnesses. If a normal person was to stumble on the convention, they would realise that some of the stuff they're saying is absolutely insane. But if you've already got an interest or an investment in the witnesses, maybe you're a Bible study, maybe a family member's a witness, then it's, it's more palatable. And as a result, their main website doesn't publicise the convention. Even though the organisation asks Jehovah's Witnesses to go door to door in the normal days or writing letters these days, texting people, inviting anyone they can to come to this convention, their own website doesn't really publicise it. There's the tiniest of banners up the top which says Invitation 2022 Pursue Peace Convention. You probably don't even know what that means. That's the extent of the advertising they're willing to do to normal people. So it is a really strange dynamic. Again, it's like my other video uh, talking about the database, it's kind of a hidden layer. The, the, the top layer, if you just stumble upon Jehovah's Witnesses, let's talk about a world in turmoil. Let's talk about the earth being ruined. But if you're already a little bit deep, if you've got an investment in them as an organisation, then you're required to watch this programme over a number of weeks containing the kind of propaganda we're about to enjoy. So let's have a look. Here we are. I mean, this, this is not the first time they've had to do it online because of coronavirus, and yet they're still unable to change. They insist on calling things the Friday morning session, the Friday afternoon session. Why? Just adapt. 
when I was in the video team, as soon as coronavirus hit, people, our team, I maybe it was the only one, but at least one team wrote to World Headquarters and said, hey, look, we're in coronavirus times now. Can we immediately scrap all of the scripts that we just won't be able to do? Basically working on scripts that we could do in a small team in an in a enclosed Bethel lockdown environment. It took them like six months before they even considered what we were saying. Like there was so much wasted time because the organization is unable to adapt quickly. Like they talk a lot about Jehovah's Chariot changing rapidly. That is not the case at all. They are very, very, it is a, a heavy, slow moving organization. And this is more proof to that point. Like, why do I need to, why is it the Friday morning session? Like, they don't even ask you to watch this on a Friday morning. Like, this doesn't make sense, guys. But I'm already getting a little bit irate and we're not even, <laughs> we're not even at where I wanted to be. Why don't you have a piece of bread and maybe you'll calm down a little. So a little bit of background before I show you the clip. These videos that I'm about to show you are the kind of videos I would work on in my team in the regional video team. So we would get an assignment like this, maybe a script. Watching these kind of videos, I get sent back into uh, making them. So... I maybe do have a unique, if not biased and strange uh, opinion or angle on these videos. Uh, but I'm going to try and keep it just to surface level where we can. In this video, we have a brother, so a, a man, <laughs> who's on the street next to a cart, which you've probably already seen. And he's trying to basically convince people to join his religion. But there's a challenge and the people watching the convention are seeing this challenge and basically it's trying to help them overcome challenges like that in their ministry when they're next to the trolley. Okay, here we go. There he is. Oh, worldly people. Oh, great story. <laughs> it's happening already. Uh, so we had like a year long discussion uh, between World Headquarters and the regional video teams of how to portray worldly people because the teaching committee, which are the ones who make these videos, they were getting a little bit sick of the same old beard um, or tattoo to show a worldly person because there are other worldly people as well. And so they were trying to come up with ideas. Um, and yeah, basically it didn't go very far. However, I feel like this is maybe a little bit of progress on that front because these worldly people, I mean, he's got this kind of um, action uh, t-shirt which fits with what we're about to see but that's the kind of thing Jehovah's Witnesses couldn't dream of wearing because it would be seen as a statement and you can't make statements. Also the haircut probably not approved definitely not approved for convention speaker so yeah but anyway I thought that was an interesting little tidbit as soon as I saw this I thought wow he's not got a tattoo he's not got a gun or anything this is some progress here guys so the other guy looks about Hey, can I see that? Yeah, of course. Here you go. Enjoy life forever. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, that's a very good question, uh. actually. Oh, I hate these. This so unrealistic. No one is doing this. No one is so like aggressively interested. Like, they might be aggressive, but they're not aggressively like, well, tell me about these promises. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And this is the kind of thing that really annoyed me when the scripts and whatever. The people who write these scripts are Bethelites. And it is their job to write scripts. So these people don't have kids and they don't, you know, have any, don't live in the real world. And so they imagine these scenarios that are happening because Satan's out to get witnesses, but they don't actually... I mean, if they're a really good scriptwriter, they're probably doing loads of overtime and don't really do the trolley anyway. So it's just like a really strange scenario that doesn't happen and it feels really stiff. Hey there, guys. Um, it's Ben from the end of recording and I don't tell people this normally, but I should. Can you just like like and subscribe and share the video? Uh, I hate doing that, but apparently it helps if I tell you. YouTube tell me to tell you, so I should be telling you. Here I am telling you. Um, and it would be great if you could subscribe. I can't, I can't subscribe to that. But let's carry on, let's carry on. How do you answer? Well, God promises. No, no, no. Oh, no, not God, you. What are you doing? 
Good, uh, good question. Me? Well, I try to help others. Try? Man, all you do is stand next to your little car while the rest of us stand up for your rights, bro. Well, I'm actually neutral. Neutral? Ain't no. no neutral. Oh, I hate this so much. Okay, so a number of things. One, the guy's absolutely true. Good job, scriptwriter. What are you doing, actually, Jehovah's Witnesses, to help people? Well, you think, I've got God's message, it's, it's the only thing. But why does that stop you from helping people in the meantime? That's the question. Like, let's say it's true. Let's say it's 100% true and this is really helping people. You are saving lives. Why can you not also be good citizens, like, as you live now? Why can't, why can't you be really good advocates for recycling and living a green lifestyle, maybe vegan, like, like reducing the impact on the environment? Why can't you do that now? Huh? Why, why, why is it all in the future? If the future's there, that's great. But also, it's just a really strange stance to take because their answer is, well, God, none of this matters because God's going to fix it. And it's like, well, if you put in the effort now to recycle, to reuse, to, to, to be a green, good citizen of the world and not so wasteful and destructive... Do you think that God's just going to ignore those efforts and make it really untidy again and, and undo your good works? Like, surely you're making his job easier in the future. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Why do you have to be so inactive? And as soon as you go on this line, as they're doing in the video, Jehovah's Witnesses start talking about neutrality. Well, I don't get involved because that's a political statement. He talks about neutrality here. Okay, we are neutral. We don't get involved in politics. That's just not true. That is really, really not true. What they mean to say is we don't get involved in politics when it doesn't affect our organisation. So if a government somehow affects me as an individual, maybe they're taking away my rights, maybe they're raising taxes, maybe they're doing something that negatively impacts me and my family. As a Jehovah's Witness, I cannot in any way get involved. I have to remain neutral. Neutrality is a core part of me as an individual. But if something happens to the organisation, if uh, Russia, for instance, starts getting overly aggressive, unnecessarily aggressive towards Jehovah's Witnesses and, and tries to ban the organisation, what do Jehovah's Witnesses do? Well, the leadership, the governing body, ask all Jehovah's Witnesses to start writing letters to government officials demanding that they change their minds, that they reconsider, that uh, telling them they're making the wrong decision. That is a political statement. Now, maybe a challenge. Somewhere on the internet, there's a picture of me in Bethel um, in a long line of, uh, of people waiting to send letters to Vladimir Putin to make him reconsider his decision. But, but we're only doing that because the organization told us we should. On Tuesday, March 21st, 2017, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses invited the Worldwide Brotherhood to write letters of appeal to governmental authorities at the highest level who were threatening to ban our activities throughout the Russian Federation. So that is getting involved in, in politics. That, that is, you're asking a politician, the head of the state, to change their mind about something, to change a policy so that it then favours you. That is getting involved in politics. It's something they specifically ask Jehovah's Witnesses to do. It was almost, I would say, mandatory because of the culture of witnesses. Everyone was asking, have you sent yours? Have you sent yours? Like, what's going on? It was a vibe. There was a lot of, um, what's the word? A lot of excitement in the witnesses that we're actively campaigning for something. But they don't view it like that. They don't see it as a political statement. The point is, Jehovah's Witnesses feign neutrality because when it's an individual right... Jehovah's Witnesses don't care. Bethel do not care about your individual rights. They only care about protecting the organisation. And that is really the key. So when people say, well, what are you doing? And they say, well, we're neutral. That's not the case. They're neutral in terms of individual rights. And really, it should be the other way around. We should be looking at campaigning for, for individual rights, 
for equality in race or sexual orientation or gender, but instead we only look at protecting large multi-million pound organisations. You see the slight... You see how you... Just see how dumb it is. It's just... Literally, they will die on a stake, excuse the expression, to, to tell you about how neutral they are. But the moment the governing body say, well, can you write a letter to tell this politician that he's doing the wrong thing? They're out there. They're campaigning politically. And they want that politician out of office, essentially. So when this guy says, well, you're not neutral, you're a coward. In... I actually kind of agree. I, annoyingly, you can't take it out on the people that stand here with the trolley because they just... I'm sorry, but they're, they're sheep. They, they're not really thinking. They're doing what they're told. So this would be the wrong way to tackle it. However, the point is true. Um, let's just see how he tries to get around this. You're just a coward. Take your trash. Right. See, this is really annoying. He, he just doesn't combat it in the video. Uh, and obviously in the video, it's meant to portray, you know, that he's got a bit flustered and that he hasn't reacted in possibly the best way. But in doing so, they, they leave the question unanswered. So Jehovah's Witnesses think, oh, we could have answered, but he just didn't have the courage to in this video. Well, what was the answer? What are, what are you doing? How could you have responded to that? We come back to this video in a second, uh, but oh, it's just so frustrating. Let's let's see. Let's go to the second part. Okay, here we are on the trolley again. Yeah, here come the worldly people. Gotta watch out, worldly people. Hey, how do you get the nerve to keep coming out here? because he's brainwashed. Look, you were right about what you said. No one okay. should stand around while other people suffer injustice. What? No one should stand around while other people suffer injustice. That's what you're doing, my friend. You are literally stood around, literally, whilst people suffer injustice. Now, I bet he's going to start talking about God's kingdom and actively doing stuff. Is that where this is going? So do something. Fight like we do. Thank you. This is my way of making a difference. The only way that I know the world can really change. Come this is my way of making a difference. What difference have you made? Like, I wonder how many... In this scenario, because it is a video, how many people has this person brought into the truth? How many people has this guy converted? Because I did it for 27 years, not one. It, everyone I've ever spoken to, it, it's a rare occurrence that someone actually comes in. So, so when you say, I know this makes a difference, more than likely you haven't seen it make a difference at all. Like, at, at all. You have made zero impact on the world, uh, except from those articles of literature that are on your cart probably being shipped in a non-green way from thousands of miles away. I mean, in Germany, they ship to Northern Africa. So we are printing literature. We're shipping it out to a different continent, literally destroying the planet as we do so for it to sit on a trolley and not go anywhere. And the person next to the trolley goes, well, this is the way I know to make a difference. Let's go on. Come on, man, the Bible? Like, oh, I get what you're thinking, but let me show you just one scripture. Him. All right, one scripture. So one this scripture. is a verse in the Bible that convinced me of how I can make a difference. It's in Matthew chapter 24, verse Matthew 24, 14. 14. Here it says, And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. How does that... No, don't. Oh, OK, again, they end the video there because that conversation can't possibly end well. That's why we end the video there. He reads the scripture and Jehovah's Witnesses go, oh, my goodness, reading a scripture on the ministry. That guy's amazing. He's built up the courage. He's doing it. But like, what? What is that? We're OK, let's just take a step back. He says you're doing nothing. 
on the car. I say I am doing something. This is the only thing I know that works, even though I give you no proof that it works whatsoever. Then he says, well, come on, that can't be in the Bible. He says it is in the Bible. He reads the scripture. And just because of the funky music in the background, we're meant to believe that that is progress. But how is it? What have you done? You've told the man this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth and then the end will come. Okay? So you've said to him, I know this works because in this book that I believe is from God, it says that I would be standing here and then the end would come. How does that help anyone? Like he he doesn't know Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs. He doesn't know that the end means everyone's dead except Jehovah's Witnesses and then they live happily ever after. So that even the scripture on its own doesn't sound good. It sounds like I stand here and everything ends. So again, this, this video is designed for Jehovah's Witnesses. Even though they think it's for the public, it's designed to manipulate their feelings so that they feel like, yes, if I remain calm and peaceable by the trolley, I will make such progress. But in reality, there was no progress to be made. The points being made were valid. You are doing nothing by standing on the carts. You don't have proof that it's working. Like, you, you should be being better citizens than you really are. But at the end of the video, Jehovah's Witnesses feel, yes, if someone comes up to me and starts talking about the fact that I'm not neutral and comes from my neutrality, I can make a defence. But you can't. You're not neutral. And you don't really, in my view at least, have a hope that is believable. Okay, that was quite a lot. So I'm actually just going to take a little bit of a break, <laughs> chill out, and we'll come back to the other video that I wanted to discuss in, um, in the next one. So thanks for listening to me ramble on about <laughs> life. And um, hopefully we can begin to just recover from the torment that is the 2022 convention. Catch you in the next one.